Welcome to the next session of Deepening Discipleship. In this session, our topic is Sola Scriptura, Scripture Alone. This was one of the key principles of the Protestant Reformation, and it's an important part of our faith tradition that can impact us as individuals and a community in many different ways. So in this session, we'll be reflecting together on the role that the Bible has in our lives and in the life of our community. We'll be thinking together about how scripture impacts us in daily interactions, how it can guide us in times of significant change. When someone joins this congregation, they meet together with the consistory, the elders and the deacons, and one of the questions which is asked is, do you affirm that the Bible, both the Old and the New Testaments, are our only rule for faith and life? So what does that mean? The Bible is our only rule for faith and life. One professor who taught my Reformed Theology class compared the Bible to a ruler or a measuring stick, a standard against which any other source of information or guidance is measured. And so the Bible is the, the highest guide, if you will, in our thinking and our decision making and how we conduct ourselves and the choices that we make together as a faith community. The Bible is our story. It is the story of our forebears in the faith and we are grafted into that larger story of God's interaction with humankind. And it's a story through which we understand and reflect upon our own lives and our world. The Bible is a place where we can look for guidance in times of great change and significant challenges. The Bible, we say, is our only rule for faith and life, our best guide in living in God's ways. That question that is posed to new members is rooted in the Protestant Reformation and in this idea of sola scriptura. Prior to the Protestant Reformation, the church at that time affirmed that scripture and the traditions of the church held equal value. In other words, practices or decisions that needed to be made or uh, the way the church was run in general was equally shaped by long-standing traditions of the church as well as scripture. But the Protestant reformers had concerns about some problems that had become tradition in the church and they felt that it was time to uh, go back to the basics, uh, if you will. Go back to some of the original guidance that was found primarily in Scripture and, and to point to Scripture as the, the highest authority in our decision-making. If you've ever been to a meeting in which you suggested a new idea only to have it shut down by someone who said, well, we've always done it the opposite way, you might see how hard it can be to change traditions. And so the Protestant reformers focused on scripture as this agent of change or a way to constantly reform ourselves and our community. Of course, we can still fall into patterns and habits. We can still um, interpret scripture in certain ways that can be um, holding us back as a community or that can be hurtful to other people. But the theory at least is that scripture is there as um, a, a third party, a, a outside voice that can speak to us and offer us guidance to um, live in ways that are more just and righteous. Reformed and ever 
reformed according to the word of God. That's, that's another of the phrases that our tradition has adopted over time. So the idea was not that we would make a few changes into church government and then completely be finished with the process, but rather that we would try to the best of our ability to be open to the constant changes and, and transformation that um, the Spirit can breathe into us and that uh, can, the Spirit can speak to us through Scripture to, to guide us in those ways. So scriptures are only rule for faith and life. Who then reads the Bible? I think it's very interesting to think about some historical events that happened around the time of the Protestant Reformation. So in the mid-1400s, Gutenberg made further advances in his printing press. Previously, all books were handwritten, uh, mostly in monasteries, and therefore books were very, very rare. Bibles were very, very rare. And it was not easy for an average person to obtain a copy of, of a Bible. The printing press changed that. And so initially pamphlets were made readily available, uh, which spread some new ideas that led to support for the Protestant Reformation. And then eventually Bibles were more widely available as well. And so the, the technological advancement of the printing press may have had an impact in the ways that our theology could be lived out. People, your average church member, can't have access to the Bible themselves if they are very, very hard to come by. But after the printing press made them readily available, it changed who could literally have a copy of the Bible in their own hands, who could read it for themselves. One of the things that we affirm is that the Bible is not a dead letter, but a living word, a dynamic word, that God is still speaking to us through the Bible, and that God has a, a new and a fresh, fresh message for us all the time. So this idea about the Bible is another door that opens to possibilities for transformation. And the Bible is an honest word about our collective past. The Bible tells both about the times when the people of God did things well, but the Bible also tells the uncomfortable truth about when the people of God, all of us, have gotten it wrong. The Bible quite openly talks about Peter denying Jesus and King David, perhaps one of the most highly regarded people in all of the Old Testament, all of his uh, corruption, his destructive, harmful actions, they are explained quite honestly and openly. And so the Bible gives us an honest reflection of human life, which is necessary at times to lead us toward honest transformation. Some of the stories in the Bible are never again stories things that we should never repeat. But the truth-telling that comes through the Bible can be an agent of transformation for us and can call us to continually reform our lives and our communities. The Bible speaks to us with a call for justice, calling us, inviting us, drawing us, compelling us to seek after God's ways of righteousness and justice, and in so doing, leads us to this constant life of transformation. Of course, we know that we can misuse scripture. We can take the word of God out of context. We can contort it for our own purposes. We can use it 
to harm other people. We all know of the evil of justifying slavery and using the Bible to justify slavery. We know about how the Bible has been used to exclude LGBTQ plus persons from Christian community and the harmful, destructive ways that that has impacted people. If you're watching this video, you might already be aware, and if not, I want to share a little bit with you about how our understanding of scripture has led us as a congregation and also our classes, our regional group of churches, to understand that God was calling us to be open and affirming and to celebrate the lives, gifts, and ministries of LGBTQ plus persons. And that's been the case for many, many years. You might know that other people in the Reformed Church in America interpret scripture in a different way. And this year, 2020, there is the possibility that some big decisions will be made at the denominational level uh, throughout North America uh, related to that and, and how best we should uh, proceed, whether that means significant changes in the denomination, even to the point of um, forming more than one denomination, or if there are other changes that might be made because of that. But this again is to say that scripture, interpreting scripture and listening together for how God is calling us toward transformation through the Bible, not only looking at tr church tradition, but looking at um, how the Spirit is speaking to us through Scripture can lead us to a more inclusive and welcoming and just place for all people. Of course, when we read the Bible, we know that we have to be very, very careful about how we interpret it. Anytime that English speakers are reading the Bible in English, we are reading a translation that's come from a different language, a different context, a different point in history. And we need to be as mindful and thoughtful as we can about the lenses through which we look at scripture. What are the presumptions and the, the um, parts of our context that we bring to the way that we read scripture? And so we try to be open to the Spirit's guidance we try to read scripture together in community, and we try to look at the whole of scripture and God's dominant message of grace through the saving, reconciling, redeeming love of Christ Jesus whenever we are interpreting parts of scripture. So what role does scripture play in your life? How does it impact you in daily life? How does it impact us as a community? How do you think of the Bible? If you had to describe it with a word or phrase, what might you use? Do you think of the Bible as a guide, a conversation partner, a mirror, a voice calling for justice? How would you describe the way that the Bible impacts you or guides you in your life? And how can the Bible continue to lead all of us together to that place of being open for transformation and constantly being reshaped and reformed by God's Spirit? There are three different readings that you have available as options to reflect on. One of them is from Martin Luther, a collection of some short excerpts from Martin Luther on the topic of scripture. There's another selection from Daniel Migliori. We also read from Migliori's book in our last session. And again, uh, look to that book for some reflections on uh, how we see scripture and the role it can play for us. 
And then finally, there is a selection from a book by Marjorie Thompson, specifically about spiritual reading and uh, reading the Bible with an eye toward personal and communal transformation. So those three readings will be posted. We invite you to uh, look through any of them if you would like to. And um, if you would like to join us in a Zoom meeting to reflect together on the role that the Bible plays in our lives. And if there are other ways that we need to open ourselves to um, fresh guidance from the Spirit and um, continue to allow ourselves to be transformed by the living, dynamic message of grace that God offers to us through Christ Jesus. Look forward to reflecting together with you on these topics.